Hey folks, uh, Paul Roberts here. Uh, it's now official. Winter is on. Uh, early winter to be specific. If you've been following my video fishing journals, we've been watching water temperatures erode and have been responding accordingly in our fishing. Another snow has now come through and finally pushed us over the edge, knocking water temperatures below the 50 degree Fahrenheit mark uh, down into the 40s. And I call that winter. Winter is when the bass's physical performance capacity bottoms out um, and, and their mobility and hunting capabilities pretty much go with it. Over the course of the winter, as temperatures continue to plummet, bass will reduce their activity to basal rates, uh, requiring very little food and they essentially stop growing over this period. In general, winter requires that bass, a warm water species, shift into metabolic maintenance mode to protect their previous investments in body weight. Uh, body weight, fats in particular, is what will see them through the rigors of the coming spawn, uh, which is nature's prime directive, so to speak. So to do this, um, bass seek stability during winter um, in terms of temperature and current, uh, water movement that might require that they work to hold position. R remember, they're, they're trying to uh, conserve energy. Uh, this is why deep water main lake areas, uh, that is um, areas of large water volume, tend to be the most common wintering locations large masses of water are simply more resistant to temperature change. Steep contours are often uh, appreciated too um, because they're the interface between shallow and deep. Um, they act as a physical object to orient to um, and, and can also provide protection from current. Lastly, cover is important to winter bass just as it is the rest of the year. Because of the strict requirements for winter habitat, bass often consolidate, they group up um, in a few prime areas. Uh, find them and you've found your fishing. Now, despite downshifting into maintenance mode, bass are still at risk of losing body weight, even while remaining inactive, simply from their body's basal or, or maintenance metabolic costs. At the same time, reproductive tissues uh, begin to develop in the fall, uh, when water temperatures are still supportive of tissue growth. What this means is that food is still important. So the bass will continue to keep track of their food sources. The winter environment and the feeding opportunities it provides are a bit different than they are during the warm months. Typically, vegetation dies back as seasonal light levels drop. Uh, we've been watching that throughout the fall. Uh, water levels often fall by winter too, reducing access to some, some of the shoreline cover. As a triple whammy, winter conditions make the immediate shallows inhospitable at times. Cold nights can cause intense water temperature drops in the immediate shallows, uh, which pushes fish out of these areas. All these circumstances together uh, displace prey fishes, uh, moving them out into deeper, more open water. The effect on the food chain can be enormous. Um, uh, winter conditions um, takes its toll on, on weak individuals, resulting in prey numbers, uh, small individuals in particular, declining um, in, in numbers due to, to starvation, cold shock, and predation. Early winter can offer great fishing, though, for, for all these very reasons. Prey becomes exposed, displaced, and weakened, uh, making them more vulnerable to larger predators, um, like our bass. The great fishing period um, known to ice fishers as first ice, um, I believe, is due to these, these very factors. Now, what I've just given here are some general guidelines that tend to hold across the largemouth range. Um, it's pretty much the same basic animal across that range. However, climate, um, weather, uh, water body makeup and layout, um, and prey types all factor into just how your, your own fishing is, is going to set up. Um, hopefully this background will help you focus on uh, what's important to the bass during winter. The water we'll fish on this outing is what I call my winter laboratory, um, or one of them at least. Um, I know it pretty well. It's very small, a little over two acres in size, uh, which allows me to track the bass um, uh, there more quickly than I, I might in a larger system. It's best described as a swimming pool, um, a dishpan shaped or contoured water body with no cover in the main basin. It's flat as a table out there. The vast majority of the food chain action is shoreline oriented because that's where the cover, the protection for the prey fishes, um, exists. During winter, it appears the fish leave the immediate shoreline. Um, they still do make use of the shoreline um, throughout the winter, uh, but I suspect they come and go as water conditions, um, temperature in particular, fluctuates. 
cold nights during early winter can make the immediate shallows chill, um, even, even develop skim ice, um, while the, the main water body is still holding heat and remaining in the 40s. Um, the fish return to the immediate shorelines um, and the cover it provides when, when conditions stabilize. What we'll see in this video is two short winter fishing days. The first day opened with very cold overnight temperatures um, and the immediate shorelines um, were, were essentially devoid of fish. There's one right under my boat just about. The second night was warmer um, and, and that day I found the bass piled onto a specific shoreline um, up on the shoreline shelf um, associated with the overhead cover um, that's there. There's one. Okay, um, that should provide enough background. Um, if you're still with me, um, let's fish. Let's hit the water um, during early winter. Well, I forgot to turn my cameras on. <laughs> First cast with a grub, and I'll explain this in a minute <laughs> where I'm fishing the whole bit. Let me wrestle this fish. Okay. There we go. That's a start. All right. One grub bass in good body condition, um, both uh, food and um, gonads. Probably a female. There we go. And she's kind of a yellow color, it's a common winter thing. She's about 15 inches. All right. All right, it is winter. <laughs> and uh, that would be, well, almost my first winter bass. I guess it was late fall last week. <laughs> Water temperature is 45 degrees. So what we've had is another good snow, and there's, there's actually some snow still on the um, on the bank over there, uh, and uh, it knocked off another uh, seven, eight degrees, and it stayed cool. It hasn't continued to snow, but the nights have been in the 20s. Uh, why is the water not frozen? Because it holds heat. That's the way water is, and it gives its heat up slowly and stingily. Um, uh, it won't ice over until we get, you know, a, a few more cold blasts or a really frigid blast. There is not enough sun angle to, uh, to heat this water anymore. Um, the brightest, sunniest day is going to heat the surface one or two degrees Fahrenheit. That could blow to uh, downwind to a shoreline, but um, it's not going to penetrate. Uh, so chasing uh, warm water um, like you do in the spring or earlier in the fall is it's it's closing down. I'm still watching for it, but um, essentially uh, we should be just about isothermic. So I've got 45 degrees. I'm going to pull up my anchor and thermometer. And I'm at 44 on the bottom. Okay, so we, uh, we're isothermic and we are below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. We are in winter. Uh, what I've done, I've essentially gone to extremely light tackle. Um, there's no cover here to speak of. I've got a good four feet of clarity, of visibility. The fish can see really well. There's no cover, and the lure sizes are dropping. Uh, so I've gone to, this is an ultralight spinning rod, four pound test. I've got a medium light spinning rod with six pound tests, and I've got a medium with eight pound test. And I'll be uh, fishing cold water lures. So good start, first cast with a grub. There's one right under my boat, just about. Oh, you're just about to jump, huh? So that fish took, um, just like this one did, uh, on the bottom and real slow, which is kind of what's expected. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Here we are, honey. And there's the winter red teeth. Forgot to check on the other one. Um, coming in strong.
Well, this one's not yellow. This one's very, very pale. Pale and green. You look like a summer fish. But there's the red, the red in the teeth and red starting down in the belly area. About a 13 inch fish, 12, 12 and a half, 13. So far, I haven't got anybody up along the shoreline with. Just gonna share the grub. It's a, uh, it's a Ned rig. It's an, a Ned grub. It, lots of grubs will do. Um, these just are very buoyant. So, uh, especially in cold water like this, um, they, they can be retrieved pretty slowly. The jig head is roughly a sixteenth of an ounce, and uh, the, this is a good color for this pond. Um, uh, not too much of a color freak, however. There are these bass spend a lot of time feeding on dragonfly larvae. This guy is the color of those dragonfly larvae. It's the color of the bottom. It's that muddy brown. It's been really effective here. I've caught them on other colors too, but. Yeah, I'm touching bottom. Now I'm just sitting on bottom. Fishing a dead lure is is a okay this time of year for sure. There's one little guy. Woo. that baby all right fat little guy red red teeth starting to red um, and uh, not really yellow. Um, later in the year, they're going to get yellow. And what that means is I think that they are bottom hugging. And I don't know what the yellow is. It's something physiological. Whoa, that's a fish. <laughs> he was running with it. I just saw my line just start to swim away. All right, so that's a couple, couple juveniles, red teeth. Um, one nice thing about a, these Elaztec grubs is the fish generally hold them pretty well. I'm going to be paying attention, paying close attention to how they're striking. Um, and where they are. Um, so, you know, how aggressive are they? Are they near the bottom? Are they willing to chase? Um, uh, do they like some action in the, the retrieve? Do they want it just slow rolled? Skip right to that tree. There's always fish holding off of that tree. and bottom. Should be dropping over that edge here now. There's one little guy, I think. It was a tap. Okay, not tiny. A regular old bass. Dump. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Now those are red.
red winter teeth. You see that? Yep. Yeah, I can probably get that. Yep, Lego. All right, thin fish. All right, honey. <laughs> Again, super slow retrieve. It's so easy to want to just crank it back in. It's like you're straining the water, but uh, no, a little crawl. All right, good old hair jig. Um, slow retrieve with twitches. There's a fish. He was eating it, and I thought I was trying to tug away from it. That's funny. Zoop, that should be your last run, huh? Come on in, Papa. All right, beautiful fish. Oh, that's a pretty fish. Oh yeah, that's a pretty thing. Look at that. Mm. About maybe just shy of 15. And there's that hair jig. Mm. Very pretty. This is one of those yellow ones I was talking about. Do you see that yellow? There's no mud on her or anything. She's not, she's active. Teeth are barely red yet, just starting. Um, look at that little mouth. Very beautiful, gorgeous condition. Wow, that's a chunk. That is a handful right there for a 14 and a three quarter inch bass. <laughs> it's funny, I thought I was hung I thought I was just hanging up on, uh, like that, on algae. And I was tugging and tugging and, come on, give it back. And then it occurred to me to sweep into it. These fish do move around and I've watched this and videoed it and things. They will, at times, move away to more sanctuary areas. Uh, what I mean, and, and what that would be would be usually overhead cover if they have it here. They don't have it. They've got deep water, but they're not using it because it's you know just open and flat like a table out there. And I think they have slid into this these tall trees here. They are acting as the overhead cover. There's one. Yep, I got to get on on those. Uh, lures right away when I when they touch down because I've got fish up on the shelf. <laughs> Gonna jump. So there's a cluster of fish under these trees here. I think I missed one up and up there close too by not being right on this on the splashdown and in initial descent. There's a 13er. About an average bass for this pond. Oh gosh, another pretty yellow thing. Look at that. Not too red yet. Yeah. Oh, you're a beaut. You are a beaut. Okay, let's get on that jig right away when it lands. There's this fish up on the shelf. There's one. Okay, that's the second fish from that exact spot. 
Um, and I think there may have been two. Oh! <laughs> oh, man. Gonna jump, eh? Ooh, you're just coming up. So, uh... Okay, I found them. Found them in this dish pan, and of course, they are cover-related. Whoa! Stay away from my anchor line, buddy. There we are. Whoops, there we are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Another 16er. Thinner on the thin side, but muscly. And yellow again. And she's been caught. You can see uh, she's been caught there. Uh, you can't see where my... There's my jig hole right there. It's pretty tiny. I don't even think that'll bruise. Micro barbs. Um, um, definitely barbed. Jigs have to be barbed. Uh, jigs are too compact, too heavy, and they get they get spat really easily. That's a perfect cast. What I'm doing is trapping it just before it enters. I'm throwing long, but then I'm stopping the the bait just before it hits the water, and that allows a quiet entry. Just a little pat, a little spat. Ooh, that felt like one. I was fishing it dead on the bottom there for a minute. I didn't want it to stay up there in that strike zone a little longer. May have been a fish. I'm gonna, I'm catching them, but I wanna check my hook point. Make sure I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm gonna. Okay, I picked up a little Kara, that's what that was. It's not bad, but it is not perfect. If you ever find your missing, your potential missing fish, um, and you're thinking you're not reacting quick enough and all that, um, check your point. I don't know how many people do that, but man, it is so critical. That is what, that's your connection with the fish right there. That's what allows you to catch them. There it is. It's got to stick in your thumbnail, and it's got to be sticky sharp. There's one. Oh. <laughs> Come over this way. Oh, that's a good one. That's a little better one. So, I was talking about fish size in this pond. This pond generally has. Uh, The biggest bass in here that I know of is maybe 19 inches. Oh, another pretty one. Okay, good. There we go. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, yeah. So there's a 16er. Uh, yellow. Do you see that yellow? <laughs> uh, yeah, very clean, uh, beautiful condition. Um, gonads in there, and and food she's able to eat. And there's that hair jig. Yeah, beautiful fish you are. Are a beautiful fish. Gosh, I love these fish. <laughs>